Hi everyone. Once again, apologies for my voice. In this tutorial, we're going to be working on finding the mean and standard deviation of a sample proportion. We're going to be looking at two main things. First of all, how do we find the mean or mu and the standard deviation or sigma when the population in a question is small? And secondly, how do we find mu and sigma when the population is large? Okay, first of all, let's look at finding mu and sigma when the population is small. When the population in a question is small, we calculate mu and sigma from the sampling distribution. It's very much the same process that we followed when we were working with discrete probability distributions. You'll remember these formulas from when we were studying discrete probability distributions, and you'll remember that the expected value of x is found by multiplying each value of x by its associated probability and then adding each of your answers together. The standard deviation of x is found by finding the square root of the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x, the whole thing squared. Now the formulas for sampling distributions are very similar to those ones. There are a few differences, but they're expressed in terms of p hat. So we've got the expected value of p hat is equal to each value of p hat multiplied by its associated probability. And then we add all our answers together. And the standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of the expected value of p hat squared minus the expected value of p hat, the whole thing squared. Let's look at our previous example that we looked at a few tutorials ago, and let's find the expected value of p hat and the standard deviation of p hat for this distribution. Hopefully you'll remember this distribution from that question, and we're going to use this distribution to find mu and sigma. Let's start with the mean. Once again, the expected value of p hat is the value of p hat multiplied by its probability, and then we add all our answers together. So what I'm going to do is, I'm simply going to say 0 times 12 on 805 plus 1 fifth times 39 on 322 plus 2 fifths times 52 on 161 plus 3 fifths times 286 on 805 plus 4 fifths times 26 on 161 plus 1 times 39 on 1610. Here's the working for each of those multiplications. And when I add them together, I get the expected value of p hat is 13 on 25. And the approximate value of this is 0.52. So the expected value of the sample proportion p hat is 0 0.52. Now let's look at finding the standard deviation of p hat. Once again, we're using the same distribution. And the standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of the expected value of p hat squared minus the expected value of p hat, the whole thing squared. Now, the first thing we need to do is to find the expected value of p hat squared. Now, to do this, all we do is we multiply each value of p hat and square it. So, I need to first of all square, for example, two fifths to get four on 25 and then multiply it by 52 on 161. So I do that with each value of p hat. Zero squared is zero, one fifth squared is one on 25, two fifths, four on 25, three fifths, nine on 25, and four fifths, 16 on 25. 1 squared is 1. 
So here is my calculation, and you will notice that in each case, I have squared the value of p hat. When I add all those values together, I get the expected value of p hat squared is 6,669 over 20,125. The second thing I need to do is to square the expected value of p hat. This was found on the previous slide, and we found that it was 13 on 25. When I square the expected value of p hat, I get 169 on 625. Now I substitute both of these values into my formula. So the standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of 6,669 over 20,125 minus 169 over 625. This gives me an approximate value of 0 0.2469, that's to four decimal places. Okay, now let's look at an example when we're finding mu and sigma when the population is large. Now you'll remember from our previous work that when the population in a question is large, we treat it like a binomial distribution. So therefore, we calculate both mu and sigma from the values of n and p in a binomial distribution. Remember, n is equal to the sample size and p is equal to the population proportion. Therefore, the formulas used are the expected value of p hat is equal to the population proportion, p, and the standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Again, using our example from the previous tutorial, remember we said that 35% of all Year 12 students in Victoria study maths methods, and we chose a sample of four students from all Year 12 students in Victoria. So therefore, p, the population proportion, was 0.35 and n was 4. So therefore, if the expected value of p hat is the population proportion, then the expected value of p hat is 0.35. The standard deviation of p hat is p times 1 minus p over n, and this becomes 0.35 times 0.65 over 4. When we find the square root of that calculation, we get a standard deviation of 0 0.2385, and that's to four decimal places. So finding the expected value of p hat and the standard deviation of p hat when the population is large is quite a simple process. Remember that the expected value of p hat and the standard deviation of p hat, mu and sigma, can be used to find the 95% confidence interval for p hat. Let's look at this example now and go through a full solution. We're told that 70% of 17 year olds in Australia attend school. If a random sample size of 20 is chosen from the population, we need to find the probability that the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion. We need to find the probability that the sample proportion lies within one standard deviation of the population proportion, and the probability that the sample proportion lies within two standard deviations of the population proportion you will notice that this is a large population we're dealing with here, all 17 year olds in Australia. Let's look at the solution and let's look at A. If the sample proportion is p hat is 0.7 and the sample size is 20, then the number of school students in the sample is 0.7 times 20, which is 14. So finding the probability that p hat is equal to 0.7 is the same as finding the probability that x is equal to 14. Using the binomial formula for this, we work out 
20C14 times 0.7 to the power of 14 times 0.3 to the power of 6. And using binomial PDF on our calculator, we find that the answer is 0 0.1916. We now need to find the standard deviation of p hat. Using the formula talked about earlier, we find the square root of 0.7 times 1 minus 0.7 over 20. This works out to be 0 0.1025. This is the standard deviation of p hat. We need to find the probability of p hat being within one standard deviation of the population proportion. So the population proportion is 0.7. We take one standard deviation away and we get 0 0.5975. This, the population proportion plus one standard deviation is equal to 0 0.8025. So we therefore need to find the probability that p hat is within 0 0.5975. 975 and 0.8025. What we now need to do is find, similarly to what we did up here, to find 0.5975 of 20, because we want 0.5975 of the sample of 20. This is equal to 11.95. 0.8025 of 20 is 16.05. Once again, because this is treated as a binomial distribution, these values need to be discrete values. So we must convert these values to the nearest whole number within the interval. 11.95 is rounded up to 12 and 16.05 is rounded down to 16. So we're finding the probability that x is between 12 and 16. Using binomial CDF, we find that the probability is 0.7795. Now let's look at part C. This time we have to work out two standard deviations below the population proportion and we find we find that it is 0 0.495. Two standard deviations above the population proportion is 0 0.905. Once again, we need to work out 0.495 of 20 and we get 9.9. .9. We also need to work out 0 0.905 times 20, which is 18.1. Change both of these values to the nearest whole numbers within the interval. 9.9 .9 is rounded up to 10 and 18.1 is rounded down to 18. So we need to find the probability that x is between 10 and 18. Using binomial CDF, we find that the answer is 0.9752. Based on the example we just looked at and the tutorial, I'd like you now to work on exercise 17b and I want you particularly to work on questions 8 to 14. These are all questions on finding the mean and standard deviation of the sample proportion. Thanks for watching.